Warning. Some viewers may be too lame to enjoy the following information. Six Flags Great Adventure just unveiled their new roller coaster for 2020, Jersey Devil Coaster. This will be the 14th roller coaster at the park, and this is absolutely an addition that has been well deserved for a long time. The last time Great Adventure got an original large scale roller coaster was El Toro back in 2006, which was 13 years ago. I was 10 years old when El Toro came out, and I'm about to turn 24. Sure, the park added Dark Knight in 2008, Green Lantern in 2011, and The Joker in 2016, but none of these coasters are original. Dark Knight and The Joker are clones of coasters featured at other amusement parks. Green Lantern is a relocated roller coaster that was originally built in 1997 in Kentucky, so it's a hand-me-down. And let's be honest, none of these rides have had a significant impact on the park. Now sure, the park has added a few other additions that have been great for the park, but roller coasters typically make the most significant impacts. Great Adventure is a major theme park located directly between New York City and Philadelphia, meaning the park has one of the largest metropolitan populations to attract guests from in the country. Additionally, several of the park's competitors are on the rise, like the new Nickelodeon Universe theme park opening at the American Dream Mall in East Rutherford, New Jersey, as well as Hershey Park, which has seen significant improvements over the years while comparatively, Great Adventure has fallen behind. Well, that all changes in 2020 with the introduction of the Jersey Devil Coaster. This is a roller coaster built by Rocky Mountain Construction, or RMC for short. RMC is one of the most cutting edge coaster manufacturers in the world. The ride is a Raptor Track coaster, meaning the coaster actually operates on a single rail and only sits one person across. This is a very unique concept of RMCs that the company first unveiled in 2018 with the additions of Railblazer at California's Great America and Wonder Woman at Six Flags Fiesta Texas. However, these coasters are clones of each other and are smaller than the Jersey Devil. Jersey Devil is actually the tallest, fastest, and longest single rail roller coaster in the world, making it a record breaker for the category. Now the ride stats may not impress you, but trust me when I say this, you almost want these single rail coasters to be smaller rather than larger. The ride will stand 130 feet tall with speeds up to 58 miles per hour, 3,000 feet of track, two inversions, and a ridiculous amount of airtime hills. Now 130 feet and 58 miles per hour may not sound very impressive, but the best thing about Raptor coasters like Jersey Devil are how tight and compact they are. With smaller hills and elements, these coasters are able to deliver the punch of a much larger coaster but packed down into a smaller space, making the rides feel uncontrollably fast. Just watch the way Railblazer California's Great America whips around its layout. It looks like a cartoon, and the experience that the coaster offers feels like nothing I've ever experienced before. So in terms of the ride experience, do I think this is a good fit for Great Adventure? Well, absolutely. I would expect this ride to offer a similar experience as Railblazer at California's Great America, which is one of my favorite roller coasters. This means that the ride will be intense, fun, and unique. It won't feel like you're riding El Toro, Nitro, or Bizarro. Basically any of the coasters are great adventure. It will have its own distinct feel, which will help set it apart from the rest of the rides of the park, as well as all the rides on the east coast of the United States. The ride features a tight 87 degree drop, which will deliver a crazy amount of ejector airtime, followed by a large diving airtime hill, basically identical to the ones on Railblazer or Wonder Woman, which slap but it looks bigger and meaner. Next, the ride heads into a large airtime hill, which will hopefully offer a similar experience as the crazy ejector airtime hills found on El Toro. Then the train heads into a large zero-g stall, where riders are suspended upside down for a few seconds, offering ample amounts of hang time. The train flies up into a turnaround, wrapping over itself, and then into another drop, which will deliver another great pop of airtime. Next is a zero-g roll, which looks similar to the one found on Iron Rattler at Six Flags Fiesta, Texas. Riders will feel weightless as the train inverts, but then are given a pop of airtime as the train rotates out of the roll and drops back to the ground. Following is a mid-course brake run, which I doubt will slow the train down much at all. This is here to help boost the amount of trains the ride can dispatch in an hour. But another thing this element will include is a great pop of airtime into the brake run and a great pop of airtime out of the brake run. Next, the ride flies through a tight turnaround and then heads into three back-to-back -back airtime hills. The first two hills are off axis, meaning they are banked at the top, adding an extra element of thrill. Finally, the ride hits the final brake run 43 seconds after dropping off the lift tilt, at least based off the animation. To get an idea of how long the ride will be, it will be about 7 seconds shorter than El Toro, so picture if El Toro ended right here. 
While this may seem short, this is a major improvement over Railblazer and Wonder Woman, which are not even 30 seconds long. Now my main concern really for this ride is if it will have a high enough throughput for the park. Great Adventure attracts over 3 million visitors each year, and this coaster will only hold 12 riders per train when compared to 36 which can be found on El Toro or Nitro. So the line could potentially move very slow, but I think the ride may have a higher capacity than we are expecting. The ride will run 4 trains. Based off the fact that 4 transfer bays are shown in the animation, and that the official fact sheet of the ride states four trains. The ride also has a mid-course brake run, meaning two trains can run on the circuit at a time, which help boost capacity. However, the critical ingredient is if the ride features a continuous loading platform, similar to Wonder Woman at Six Flags Fiesta Texas, or Haggard's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure at Universal Orlando. This means that trains never stop while loading guests and are constantly in motion. This allows trains to be loaded faster and more consistently. Therefore, it shouldn't be a problem for each train to be loaded in 40 seconds or maybe even less. If trains are dispatched every 40 seconds, that means 90 trains can be dispatched in an hour. Multiply 90 trains by 12 riders and you get 1,080 people an hour, which is pretty good. That would be a great fit for the attendance at Great Adventure. 40 second intervals should be possible as the ride is only 43 seconds long from the first drop to the final brake run. So three seconds before a train hits the final brake run, the next train can drop off the lift hill into the course, thanks to the mid-course brake run. There could also be two trains rolling through the station at once, similar to Wonder Woman at Fiesta Texas. But again, this will most likely only be possible if the park utilizes a continuous loading platform. Another major thing that will help the park is if they group 12 riders for each train prior to boarding. And if guests load and unload on the same side of the platform, a place to store all loose articles before getting on the ride will aid the loading times, as guests will simply climb into their seat without any holdups. Then following their ride, they can easily grab their belongings from the storage space without causing interruption. A single rider line would help as well. But that idea only works with a continuous loading platform. If trains are loaded traditionally using air gates like Railblazer or Great America, I would expect slower operations. So time will tell if the ride uses continuous loading. If the ride does feature continuous loading platform, and my hunch about the dispatch interval is correct, I think the ride will have a great capacity for the park, making it a great fit. Now let's just hope that Six Flags Corporate doesn't impose a tight budget on the ride, allowing only four operators max to run the ride. I've worked in rides at both Six Flags Parks and Cedar Fair, and having a large crew of operators is much better than having a smaller crew, just saying. Now the only thing that I kinda don't like about the ride is its name. I kinda just wish it was called Jersey Devil instead of Jersey Devil Coaster. It just doesn't seem necessary to have Coaster in the name. It kinda sounds like a clickbaity YouTube title. A Jersey Devil Roller Coaster 4K 60fps OMG so scary. I think if the ride was simply called the Jersey Devil or Jersey Devil the Ride, that would be a much better name, but in the end, it, this doesn't really matter. Now of course, this video is all based on speculation, hence why this is part one of whether or not I think this coaster is the right addition for Great Adventure. I will be making part two once the coaster actually opens with my final review of the ride. Great Adventure is my home park, and I am extremely excited the park is adding this coaster. So far, this looks like one of the best new roller coasters opening in 2020, and I couldn't be happier. Be sure to drop a comment down below with what you think about Jersey Devil Coaster, and feel free to add any input about the topics I discussed in the video. Thanks for watching everyone, and I will see you in line for the Jersey Devil Coaster.